Thanks for joining us. My name's Alex Bainbridge. I'm with Green Left. I should emphasize he's not connected to the Green Party, but I've just been speaking to Amy McMahon, who is the Greens candidate for South Brisbane. And according to the, the latest betting odds, she's actually got a very good chance of actually winning this seat, which would be a very dramatic upset in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Queensland political situation. It would mean unseating a former Deputy Premier, and it would uh, signal a big shift in the, in the sort of state's politics. Now, we spoke about quite a few things, including Including, like, you know, what are the details of the Greens agenda? How realistic is it that this agenda could be implemented? Uh, some of the Labor Party's dirty tricks and some of the other issues in the campaign, and also how transformative really is the Greens agenda? Now, all that's coming up, but I just want to say at the beginning if you like videos like this, one of the best things you can do is to become a Green Left supporter. The link's in the description below, and you really help make this project possible. I started off by asking Amy, what are the prospects of winning the seat of South Brisbane? Yeah, look, we know that support for the Greens here has just been surging. We've got Jonathan Sri returned with a big swing here and our vote has just been building election on election. And we know that our message is really resonating with people, this, this plan for universal uh, public services, bringing essential services back into public hands, 100% clean energy, you know, free school lunches. We know these ideas are really resonating with people, particularly at a time when we're facing an economic downturn. And people are looking for, you know, what solutions are there that are not only be going, not only going to be helping us get out of the recession, uh, but harnessing the state's enormous wealth to make sure that every Queenslander has the things they need to lead a good life. There's actually quite a lot covered in the Greens platform. Can you talk about some of the specifics of the policies you're taking to this election? So the overarching theme this election is making big corporations pay their fair share so we have the money that we need to invest in essential services and the things that all Queenslanders need. So we've talk, been talking a lot about uh, health and education. We've been talking about making sure our state schools are genuinely free and fully funded. At the moment here in South Brisbane, the state schools are underfunded by about $12 million every year. So we've been proposing to make sure the schools are, are genuinely fully funded, as well as introducing free school lunches and breakfasts for kids, which we know would be, uh, you know, a big boost for those families that are doing it tough, but also a big uh, alleviation of stress off families to get ready in the morning. We've been talking about uh, expanding our healthcare system, 9,500 more doctors and nurses, and also free hospital parking. Uh, essentially, hospital parking functions like a hidden tax on healthcare. You know, if you have to go to the hospital and you're paying $40, you know, that's money that shouldn't be coming out of your pocket. So free hospital parking for staff and for patients, and patients would be able to allocate their spot to a friend if they wanted to. And then talking about 100% publicly owned clean energy, 100,000 beautiful, well-designed public homes, uh, you know, these kinds of things that we know Queenslanders need at the moment and would also be creating thousands of jobs to help us get out of the recession. A lot of people are going to listen to that and just say, well, that just sounds too good to be true. How realistic is it that such a platform could actually be implemented? Mm. Queensland is an incredibly wealthy state. It's just that so much of that wealth goes into offshore accounts or flows into the pockets of mining CEOs or, um, you know, um, investors overseas. Uh, and so much of our resources ends up just flowing out of Queensland. The resources sector in Queensland exported $480 billion worth in resources over the last 10 years. And on that, they paid just 7% in royalties. So we've been proposing an increase to mining royalties as well as state-based taxes on property developers and the big banks. And with that, we'd raise about $68 billion that we could invest in all of these things. All of our plans are costed. Unlike Labor and the LNP, who haven't put out their costings yet. Uh, and we know this is feasible here in Queensland. The one gap is political will, and that's what's missing at the moment. Even if you take it that the funding is given, there would no doubt be huge corporate pushback against that platform, even if you did have control of the government. So what would be your proposal to address that? 
Yeah, absolutely. Look, we know these big companies are incredibly powerful politically and economically. And really, like the era in Queensland where these big companies dictate what goes on in Queensland is over. And people recognise that the majority of Queenslanders want big companies to pay their fair share so we can fully fund essential services. So it's going to be about building up that movement on the ground, using the parliamentary um, power and pressure that we have to push back on these companies. Um, and the Greens won't back down because we don't take any corporate donations. We don't answer to these lobby groups. We don't answer to these big corporations, unlike Labor and the LNP. So we'll be the voice there to say enough is enough. It's time these big companies paid their fair share. Your major challenge here in South Brisbane is the Labor Party. And I think it would be fair to say that the Labor Party tries to walk both sides of the street, putting one position in South Brisbane and another position in, say, North Queensland especially on mining, but other issues as well. What comment would you make about whether voters should trust the progressive message that Labor might put in South Brisbane compared to their overall message across the state? Yeah, look, the, the overarching sentiment that we get on the ground is that people are fed up with the LNP and they're all also fed up with Labor. Like people aren't stupid, they can see what's going on, they can see the influence of these big corporate donations, they can see that double messaging. And we've ha had so many messages from people this election who said, you know, I gave Labor their final chance in 2017, I won't do it again. And they're feeling even more let down. I mean, we've just seen uh, Labor promoting the fact that they've opened up 18 new coal mines while down here they're trying to say that they're opening up publicly owned clean energy um, which is completely subpar. You can see how they as you said they're trying to play both sides of the coin but but people can see through this now and they want representatives who have a clear message, who have a clear vision for Queensland, uh, who aren't going to be you know having this double speak going on and are going to be honest with people as well. Um, people can see neither the Labor or the LNP. Uh, can be trusted on that because they're essentially on a unity ticket when it comes to, you know, folding to these big companies. One of the issues that has come up in this campaign is whether or not the Greens have a secret deal with the LNP. Uh, what would you say about the Greens' approach to potentially supporting one or other of the major parties as the governing party? Yeah, look, I'd say to start off with, uh, any insinuation that there's a deal is a lie that's been peddled by Labor. We've been very clear that we would not support an LNP government. Uh, they're completely anathema to our approach to politics and what we want, you know. They're all about privatisation and cutting services and cutting wages, where the Greens want to make sure these big companies are pay, pay their fair share so we can be investing back into the community. Um, so there's no way that the Greens would um, be supporting an LNP government. Um, and so if it came down to it, it would be a Labor government in that case. Um, and there's obviously a few different options that could come out of this election. Um, but yeah, as we've said, we wouldn't be supporting an LNP government. One issue in the election is the LNP's misleading, if not outright false claims about rising crime in Queensland and now the suggestion of a curfew for young people. On the other hand, the ALP has been pandering to the LNP on this issue as well. So what would be your comment about law and order as an issue in the election? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. We know that the LNP uh, use crime as a wedge at election time. We've just seen them introduce a proposal for curfew on young people uh, in regional areas, which is really appalling. But as he said, we've also seen Labor announce six hundred and forty million dollars for new police, uh, which is really incredible when we're in the midst of, you know, the incredible Black Lives Matter movement and all these social movements that have been saying, you know what, um, the police are just a band-aid solution uh, and we're not getting at the underlying causes of criminalisation and poverty um, that we're seeing here in Queensland and elsewhere. Um, and as you said also, the evidence doesn't bear out that there's actually been an increase in crime. But what our community really needs, rather than investment in police or prisons or curfews on kids, are things like housing, genuinely free education, making sure people can get the healthcare that they need, free public transport so people can get around, making sure people have those services that they need. Um, and we know what people do when they're desperate, uh, and that doesn't need to be the case. Richard Di Natale, when he was Greens leader, made a big point of emphasising that the Greens are not an anti-capitalist party. Adam Band has perhaps had a slightly different take, but still explicitly argues for a kind of green capitalism. 
What message would you have for those voters who are looking for a more transformative agenda than that? Yeah, I'd say um, look at the policies we've been putting out this election. This is a transformative platform where we're making these big companies pay their fair share. We're giving power back to everyday people and we're making sure these public services are in public hands and are fully funded and accessible to everyone. Um, and there's so many points in our broader policy that would be transformative for people's lives and would transform Queensland politics and Queensland economy. Uh, it is in, an intentionally bold platform that we're putting forward this election um, because we recognise the impact that privatisation has had. We recognise the impact that the decline in the union movement has had. We recognise the impact that a, a decade of stagnant wages has had and we know that there's better ways to do this. And looking at the public service as a, a pan, public investment as a key way to do this that's democratic, that looks at people's essential needs um, is really what we're focusing on this election. Would you say that is transformative towards green capitalism or transformative beyond capitalism? I mean for me personally I, I think it's transformative beyond capitalism and I know there's live debates within the Greens party about where we're going but I think there's definitely um, common interests about how do we make sure everyone has access to the things that they need to lead a good life taking um, you know, housing, for example, out of the private market, taking healthcare out of the private market, uh, you know, making sure school kids are fed. We've got 20% child poverty in Queensland. Um, I think these, these debates will continue in the Greens party, but I think there's definitely like a key uh, thread that's running through from the federal party and through the Queensland Greens that's focused on a transformative vision. On that, a big part of your platform is about supporting the public sector. What would you say to people who are still taken in by the neoliberal argument that the private sector works best? Uh, look, I think there's, there's some sectors that can't be left up to the private sector and also some sectors where we have uh, let um, you know, change be left in the hands of the private sector and that hasn't worked. Climate change is one such example. Leaving it to the private sector, you know, having these small kind of tweaking market, market me mechanisms haven't worked. And so what we really need now is just um, direct government investment into publicly owned um, utilities and energy generation. We've seen what happens when you privatise electricity, the prices skyrocket. Things like healthcare, um, it shouldn't be uh, a private market. This should be something that's readily accessible to every Queenslander. Uh, and education as well, making sure we've got a properly funded education sector. And then we've talk, been talking about public investment in manufacturing. We've been talking about setting up a publicly owned uh, pharmaceuticals company as well. I think these places where we can see that the private sector who are driven by, by profit, by definition, have let us down, uh, there's opportunities there for the public sector to step in and do some good work. Thanks. That was Amy McMahon, the Greens candidate for South Brisbane. I think there's quite a few of us that are really rooting for Amy to actually win this seat, along with several other Greens candidates that have got a very good chance of joining Michael Berkman in the Queensland State Parliament, and that would definitely be a welcome, uh, a welcome change. I want to emphasise again, if you like this video, please uh, press like and press share, but also become a Green Left supporter. It's the best way to make sure, it's the best way to support our project.